Global economic expert Henning Furpel from Hamburg's Institute of International Economics joins us now. Mr. Furpel, thank you very much, first of all, for coming on the show. Um, tell me, everyone knows, anyone who knows anything about economics knows that growth can't go on forever. All good things come to an end. But how predictable was this slowing of growth in those big economies of Russia, China and Brazil? I think it was predictable, but nevertheless unexpected by the markets. So we have observed a slowdown in growth rates in all of these countries, emerging economies. And now the, the once fears or doubts are, are triggered, this could easily enhance to a crisis and, and spread around the world while contagion and uh, at the end and finally affect negatively the global economy. How much of a surprise has the slowdown been though for you? It, for me, it's not a surprise because uh, this is well known in economic theory that, uh, as you said, uh, um, an economic growth um, of, of this extent would, would come to an end eventually. And this is exactly has, has happened uh, right now. Let's focus on China. It's been one of the bigger performers or the biggest performers and the global economy is so dependent on that Chinese growth. The slowdown there, why first of all? Well, there was an over-optimism in the markets that have, has led to, to, to this crisis. Um, to me, it's just a correction of expectations of over-optimism. Um, but we cannot exclude that it was also um, enhanced to, to a crisis and, and then uh, negatively affect the global economy. So global investors trusted the Chinese government's forecasts? Exactly, exactly. But, but now we can see that uh, growth is not that easy. Um, after a, a prolonged period of high rates of growth, now it comes to an end and we, we need to find new sources of growth in China. And this is a very difficult process in China. What about Russia? There the political situation is also very telling. Yes, yeah, suffering still from the sanctions um, imposed on, on Russia, on the Russian economy. But besides this, it's also the downturn in energy prices. So uh, the Russian economy has relied very heavily on exports of, of energy. And now there's a slowdown in, or a downturn in, in prices. And this has affected uh, the Russian economy negatively. And also trust amongst its own people. The capital flight has been um, extremely telling. What about Brazil just lastly? It's first and foremost a political crisis rather than economic crisis. So the Brazilian economy needs to strengthen political institutions, governance, uh, in order to, to retain trust in the Brazilian economy. Okay, so in all three cases, a political crisis um, countered uh, or, or working, uh, also trying to solve a financial crisis, uh, but in all three cases, a very tricky challenge for those governments and those countries and the people. Exactly. All these economies are running, are running into what we call a middle income trap. So uh -huh. growth comes to an end and we need to find new sources of growth uh, by strengthening institutions, uh, um, fostering economic growth by, by technical progress. And this is a very tough process. We'll get back to you in a moment.